Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guide. This is the second episode of the Android game in C++ series and in this video uh, we are going to actually get started with our Android code. So if you remember in the last video we set up Android Studio. If you haven't watched that then uh, you should probably do that because we set up the uh, Android Studio and learned its basic in the last video. So now we are going to get started with actually writing the code. So as you can see uh, in the last video my CPP directory contained a bunch of files which I have just deleted. Uh, the reason for that is uh, well, because th those files were not a part of the Android game development kit, those were uh, actually like a basic template to get us started. And while it contained a bunch of useful stuff, most of it was not according to our needs. And we'd be using some more advanced like math libraries and proper uh, stuff for like making our game scalable. And we are going to be doing it uh, on an overall different system. So for that reason, we have deleted those files. And also, it's going to help us to kind of understand everything. You know, uh, understand how Android actually works because this is uh, if even if it is probably your first project then you should probably uh, go ahead and write the code from the beginning to the end so that you actually understand how the system works and uh, if a problem comes up later on then you don't have to kind of you know you are not confused about what is happening for that you actually need to understand how this works so you can see I have gone ahead and deleted everything here and in the CMake list the TXT file Android uses CMake for the build system now if you do not know how CMake works then uh, uh, it's not really that much of a problem because we are going to be uh, using it as much as we need to nothing too much uh, for now just know that this is the CMake file and in here this add library command is the one that builds our my game library and if you remember if I just double tap shift and search for uh, you can see main activity dot kt here you can see we load this library here with this name now this name must match the one in here or else uh, the it won't be able to load correctly so with that uh, we can s you can see that we uh, specify it as a shared library this is just the type of library and afterwards we are going to add all of our cpp file here for it to build you don't need to concern yourself in any of those if you understand cmake that's pretty good if you don't then don't worry so we have got main.cpp here only here uh, even though that's not created yet but we are going to get started creating it right now so i'm going to close this go under cpp right click and hit new c++ source file in this file you can see uh, we have got a name here i'm going to just say main and we are going to uh, not create a header and hit ok so uh, you can see that it has created a main.cpp file here which uh, is currently empty and we are going to get started here implementing the main like uh, uh, function in this file and uh, you can see that we have added it to our cmake list so that it actually compiles it so we can get started with the code here so the first thing we'll do in this file is that we'll create uh, we'll mark everything we do here as extern c because we want it to avail uh, be available in the library and we'll include game activity uh, we'll include this C file actually we are not including a header we are including a C file uh, so you need to make sure you include the C file so that um, there are implementations in at least one file and we are going to include that in main.cpp in any other file we include the header but in this file we uh, include the C file now this is actually one of the uh, you know files inside of game activity library uh, in the you know the android game development kit has this game activity library and this consists of this so this we'll need to uh, do basically everything related to native android apps so we'll basically include this here in main.cpp and we'll need to include it in most other files as well so now we'll go down here and we'll create a function and uh, just as you know in uh, you know like desktop apps we begin with the main function in android apps we begin with an android main function so we'll create an void called android main uh, which takes a single argument of type uh, android app pointer which we have just called app so it's a pointer to an android app where android app is a struct that we'll be using to basically access everything related to our app now we'd like to actually print some messages to the standard output and kind of see not the standard output like the log cat panel here we'd like to print some messages here to see how our code is working for which i have created a new header called login.h and we are going to include it here and in this login.h uh, it's currently just empty we are going to go here and say hashtag include and we'll include android slash log dot h now this is a part of the like android native development kit and if you like uh, open it up you can see it consists of a bunch of function for logging like android log print and stuff like that so yeah that's uh, uh, pretty cool so we are going to go here and we are going to say uh, we are going to create a macro we are going to define it as log d for log debug and it's going to take a, a variable number of arguments as you can understand by the three dots here and we are going to say underscore underscore android log print and we are going to say android log debug here and then we'll say uh, we'll just 
this is the tag so this is like the function and the first argument is the actual priority which is going to be debug this is going to be the tag which is going to actually be lock uh, this is like the tag it will display inside of the lock at panel to kind of uh, make us understand what it is printing so we are just going to say log as a tag and this is uh, this uh, is uh, like a compiler thing like a macro compiler macro which will basically copy whatever arguments we passed here and paste them there so in main.cpp we can use it pretty simply by just saying log d and saying entering android main so yeah that when the main function executes it should print that message to the standard output now in order to actually implement our app what we'll have to do is that uh, we'll first of all go here and uh, create another function and if i open up android app you can see that it could uh, among the different kinds of struct uh, fields it contains one of them is a pointer to a function called on app command which is a required callback for processing like main app command so when uh, whenever android needs to set uh, an app command it will send it here and we'll need to provide this function that will handle that command uh, so we'll create that function as uh, you should be able to see from here it needs to have two arguments an android app pointer and an in32 for the actual command uh, we'll do that here real quick uh, we'll call it handle app command it will contain an android app pointer app and another in32 called command at the actual command that we are getting for now we'll just do to do here and actually not put anything uh, and then we'll go down here and we'll say app on app command and we'll set it to our handle app command so yeah that's pretty cool and now we'll go down here and we'll uh, execute a do while loop and we'll run this while uh, not app is uh, destroy requested so you know uh, while we are running the app uh, if you know the app needs to end then it will call this destroy requested uh, this is actually like a boolean inside of the app an integer actually to be uh, you know abject so it will set it to 1 or true when uh, it needs our game to end so it will set it to that and then we'll stop this loop uh, while it does not do that we'll keep running the loop and in the loop the first thing we need to do is call all of the events so that our app is not actually unresponsive uh, we'll basically say uh, we'll use this function called a looper underscore poll all this is a function that we'll use for basically polling all of our events at once and the first argument uh, in here is the uh, you uh, is the actual timeout we'll set it to zero because we don't care about timeout the second argument does not matter to us we'll just pass a null pointer and the third argument is going to be the actual out event so for that we'll create an integer called events and we'll pass it here and events and you can see that the other argument is the actual data and now for this data we will create an a pointer to a struct of type android poll source so we'll create a pointer to that just call it poll source and we'll pass a uh, the address of that and if this returns a value greater than zero that means uh, well it uh, well worked so we'll do that and uh, then we are going to um, by the way make sure you actually uh, cast this poll source to a void pointer pointer or else it won't work and then we'll say if the poll source is not null if it's null we don't want to do anything of course if it is null uh, not null then we'll call the process function on it and this requires two arguments first one is the uh, app and the second one is the actual poll source Anyways, uh, this might not uh, look very beginner friendly here, but uh, you don't need to worry yourself about this too much. We are going to just just know that this process is all of the uh, events. Uh, after we have done that, uh, there is actually not much we are going to do here because after this in like here, we will implement our actual game loop. So I am going to go here and uh, let's just go ahead and run our app for now. So let's see what uh, happens when we actually run the app. When I run the app, you should see that the Gradle build is running and it's starting the uh, AVD emulator. Before we run this, I made two changes to the code. First of all, instead of leaving the handle app command empty, we are just going to print debug messages. So if the app uh, command is equal to this constant uh, that is already defined in this file called app command init window, we are going to say init initializing window. And if it is terminating window, we are going to say th that we are exiting the application. And uh, the other thing you need to do is make sure you include these two cpp files not headers these are c++ files that you need to include in your main.cpp for it to work uh, one is game activity slash game activity dot cpp and the other is game text input slash game text input dot cpp if you incl uh, don't include these two files then you might get errors so uh, i'm going to run this and uh, i'm going to open up my emulator here uh, which is currently uh, completely empty uh, like it's not running anything so you can see it says open log cat panel if I open that panel it's giving all of the log cat messages and you can see it's displaying a black screen here nothing's happening and you can see that it's showing a lot of different messages but if you only want to see ours 
we can add a filter so we have already got a filter here called pack uh, which means that we will only be displaying that uh, those that are related to our app let's add another filter and say that we are going to only display those uh, the tag of which is uh, uh, log so log so if we are going to do that and you can see it says two things entering android mail and then it initializes the window and if i were to uh, go ahead and close this app uh, then you should say exiting app here as well when it terminates the window so yeah you can see that that is uh, works and that means that our basic app is kind of working even though it's empty so yeah guys i'll see you in the next video in which we'll start uh, making some things and not have an empty app and we'll do that in the next video make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for that i'll see you in the next one make sure to share this video with other people as well and bye